I always believe in pants. You can play with your legs, your attitude. With pants, it's much more funny. It's much more sophisticated. It's much more arrogant. Like a man with feminine attitude. I love pants. Fashion should be a kind of boo will and d culture. How can you live the high life? If you do not wear high heels, I don't understand why women wear these ballet pumps. They are only good if you walk like a ballet dancer and only ballet dancers do that. I invented a sweater so small, so close to the body that women's wear daily nicknamed it the poor boy sweater and consecrated me queen of knitwear. I hate the word feminine. I mean, there is a woman and a man. And when I say woman, it suggests all that is radiant, tender, fascinating, gentle, demoniac, exaggerated. Feminine makes me think of somebody who is spindly and oversweet. I don't like that. I think in the darkest moments, we need a break. My shows are about the complete woman who swallows it all. It's a question of survival. It's useless to send models out on the runway to cry. You have to be luxurious nude. It's difficult to move in the nude in front of a mirror. It's much easier to move when you're dressed. But if you can walk around in the nude easily in front of your man, if you can be luxurious in the nude, then you've really got it. First, I made a dress because I was pregnant and I wanted to be the most beautiful pregnant woman. Then I made a sweater because I wanted to have one that wasn't like anyone else's. People said making clothes inside out was not proper. I disagreed because clothes that are inside out are as beautiful as a cathedral. The key to my collections is sensuality. At hotels, you are an actress. Absolutely. You can do what you want. Go where you want. I love my home too. But I love to arrive in a hotel. They have books, chocolate, food. I put things in the little refrigerator. I am what I am. Before I was not so proud to make fashion. My family thought fashion wasn't very interesting. So I hid that. What pushes me forward is everything I have learned. Political, social, cultural. I put all that into the clothes. Since I didn't know anything, I did everything I wanted. I didn't listen to anyone. I was so violent, so authoritarian, only listening to what I wanted and myself. I don't want to show my pain. I resisted. I hesitated. I tried to be invisible, to pretend that nothing was wrong. It's impossible. It's not like me. I don't think that clothes have anything to do with the personality. That comes from the woman herself. My fashion has no time, no season. It doesn't go out of style. If someone decides that clothes can go out of fashion, then you are deciding a woman can go out of fashion. We are working women. Also, we have the problem of children, of men, to take care of our houses, so many things. I try to explain that in my clothes. They are clothes for everyday life. That is the real life of woman. I have the impression that the women around me are like me smaller, taller, fatter, thinner. But in fact, we are all the same. A woman and a dress very often fight against each other because they are not at the same place. Sometimes you see the woman moving the belt around. She is making the robe her own. She needs that. Otherwise, the dress doesn't exist. A dress will never make a woman sexy, fatale, magnificent, mysterious. It's a way of walking, of standing, or existing. The way you give your hand or your regard, that's what makes the dress. You can have a conversation with your eyes. Everyone knows that life is very expensive and you can change. You can turn. You can play with clothes with a lot of accessories. For me, luxury isn't just the real thing. It's also fake. Swarovski crystals or real diamonds. It's a game. Everything I do is really an expression of myself through colors and shapes and at the same time, I try to explain what I feel not only as a creator but also as a woman. I cannot separate one from the other. The natures of men and women are very mixed. And for me, the most fascinating type of woman is the one who is a little masculine, has a little of the man in her. And the sort of man who is fabulous is the one who is a little woman too. It's impossible not to mix them. A man is attractive when he is slightly disturbing like a woman. A woman when she's a little disturbing like a man. I hate wasting time getting dressed. I like to put something on and just think. 
Yes, that's it. It's important to keep on, keeping on, to feel good, about yourself and, be happy with who, you are. When I started in fashion, for the first 10 years, I said to myself every day, I'm going to quit tomorrow. I don't know why some, women don't wear, makeup, every woman, should gild the lily, the lead of a film that, wove around me, I played all, the roles, I traveled the world, I loved life, pleasure, I adored to write, create, I have never followed fashion, what is fashion to me, I just think of things that, inspire me, that inspire women, and I design that way, I was fascinated by, stripes from the start, on clothing, they follow a, woman's movements, I wanted women wearing my, sweaters to give the impression, they were naked, the aim wasn't to, impose outfits but to stay as, close as possible to women's, bodies and their freedom of, movement, as soon as I am up, I brush my hair, I eat breakfast first, tea and, brown bread, and sometimes a, fresh fruit juice like orange or, grapefruit, I write notes on the, previous day in my notebook, then I shower, I don't think I would ever, have plastic surgery, there isn't anything, I'd want to change, my view is that you, have to deal with who, you are, it's hard work, in a way, but somebody, has to do it, I care a lot about my looks, although I'm not too adventurous, every day I dress the same way in, a kind of uniform of black, although in varying fabrics, it's always black, it's not true that, clothes look better on, skinny girls, what counts, is the attitude, a woman who walks, well parts crowds, it's something we, should all be taught to do, knowing yourself, and learning to, love yourself as you are, is the, beginning of beauty, I think the, most important thing is to, show off what's most beautiful, about you and to hide what's, less beautiful. Sonia Rikiel, 25 May 1930 August 25, 2016, was born to Jewish parents in Neuilly sur Seine. Her mother was, from Poland, and her father was a watchmaker from Romania. She was the eldest of five sisters. Sonia was a French fashion designer and writer. She created the poor boy sweater, which was featured on the cover of French Elle magazine. Her knitwear designs and new fashion techniques led her to be dubbed the Queen of Knits. The Sonia Riquel label was founded in 1968 upon the opening of her first store, making clothing, accessories, and fragrances. Sonia was also a writer, and her first book was published in 1979. In 1948, at the age of 17, she was employed to dress the window displays in a Parisian textile store, the Grand Maison de Blanc. Sonia often wore her clothes from her own label and stuck to wearing dark green, brown, navy, and black garments. Sonia was also known for her distinctive hairstyle red hair cut into a bob with a heavy fringe. Sonia was also a writer. She wrote several books about fashion, a collection of children's stories, magazine columns and an epistolary novel with Arjine Defergs, her first book. Et G. La Voudre knew I would like her naked was published in 1979. In 2012, she co authored Nubli's Paz QG Ju. Don't forget it's a game with journalist Judith Perignon. Sonia collaborated with impresario and performer Malcolm McLaren on the song Who the Hell is Sonia Riquel? On McLaren's 1995 album Paris, Sonia makes a cameo appearance in Robert Altman's 1994 film Party Porter. Altman was inspired to make the film after attending one of Riquel's ready to wear fashion shows. The lead character, played by actress Anouk Amy, was based on the designer. Sonia appears as Hortense in the 1998 French comedy film Riches, Bells, etc. 